Hey there, this is, let's see, grade four, module four, lesson six. And in this lesson, uh, we're going to be learning how to use protractors to measure a bunch of different angles. But the, the key thing about this lesson is that we're going to be, I'm going to try and show you a variety of different uh, protractors because um, a lot of protractors look different from each other. And so we want to teach students how to grab any protractor and immediately be able to use it and figure out the key components of how to use a protractor. So let's get started on this. And uh, first thing what I've got here is a little GeoGebra app that I created. And I've got a, a protractor here. And the thing I want you to point notice about this protractor is, and I'm going to zoom in here, is that the edge right here is right there is um, not actually part of the protractor so the zero is inset inside the protractor we don't want students to line up uh, this the edge of this protractor here because then they, they're not going to get the correct correct measurement the other thing is we want to point out that uh, when we uh, put this protractor on the angle to measure it we want this target uh, I colored it blue to go directly on the corner of the angle or the vertex of the angle. And then we want to rotate the protractor so that the zero, and most protractors have a zero on both ends, so that the zero is lined up on one of the legs of the angle. All right, and then the other leg of the angle is going to tell us what the uh, measurement is, what the, de the uh, degrees is. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, the target on the vertex of the angle, but you're going to see, uh oh, we got problems here because now we can't really see the uh, angle. The protractor is covering up the angle. So what I need to do is I'm going to extend the lines of the angle, all right? Now, I'm going to extend the legs, I guess is what I should say. And when I do that, I'm not actually going to change the amount of the rotation. The rotation stays the same, so the angle stays the same. It's just that the legs got longer. And so now I can put the target on the vertex of the angle, and I can rotate so that the zero lines up with one of the legs of the angle, so you'll see the zero is lined up with one of the legs, and then when I look up here, you can see that this leg, so the angle swoops here, so it starts down here and swoops up here. So we need to count the degrees because you'll see it, it has both numbers up here, 120 and 60. But basically, if you think about it, we're going to start down here at zero, so then this is 10. This is 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So that shows us that this angle, whoa, not that angle. <laughs> I'll delete that. The angle that we were measuring, this angle here, is about 60 degrees. Now, folks, if you're off by a degree or two, that's okay because really, I mean, look how tiny these degrees are. The a degree, one degree, is 100, 300, I mean, 1 360th of a rotation. So it is a degree is really, really tiny. So if you're off by a couple of degrees, that's fine. Uh, as long as you're somewhere close to, in this case, 60 degrees. All right, now magically we've got a, a new um, pro, uh, angle that we're going to measure. And I've got a different protractor here. And this time, You'll notice that the protractor, uh, let's see, the target is right on the edge of the protractor, and you'll notice that the 0 and the 180 are right on the edge of the protractor on both sides of that protractor. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this protractor and put the target, there's the target, and we're going to put it directly on the corner of the angle or the vertex of the angle. Now the thing I'm noticing is that as I rotate, because I want to make the angle, one of the legs of the angle to line up with zero, I'm noticing I'm having a really hard time seeing 
uh, the, the legs on this angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And then on this, in this case, I'm just going to, oh, let's go this way. And I'm going to put that target right on the corner of the vertex of that angle. And let's rotate just a little bit. So now you can see that two things. We've got the target on the vertex. We've got the zero right on one leg of the angle. And then you can see whoosh, it swoops out. And here's the other leg of the angle. Now, if these legs weren't long enough, and they weren't stretching beyond the protractor, I would get a straight edge and I would use a ruler and just extend these lines because that's not going to change your angle measurement. It's just going to make it easier for you to read the measurement. And But I can see that this is an obtuse angle, so the answer has to be larger than 90. So when I start here at 0, I'm going to count over 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, there's my 90, so that's a 90 degree angle. And then 100, 110, 120, 130. Now there's 140, and I'm going to zoom in here, and it kind of looks like it's right around 134 maybe. So I'm going to call this 134 degrees. All right, this is going to be our final angle that we're going to measure. And in this case, you can see that we clearly have an acute angle. So we know the angle has to be less than 90 degrees. Uh, but we're going to change. Instead of using this protractor, which we've, been used, we've used before, we're going to change the protractor style to this one. And it's a different kind of protractor. It'll give us the exact same answer as the other protractor. It just looks a little different. And uh, in this case, the target is inset a little bit. It's not directly on the edge of the protractor, which means the zero is also not directly on the, the edge of the protractor. It's inset a little. So you just have to be aware of that. We know that step one is to place that target directly on the corner of the angle, the vertex. So the, the target is now on the vertex of that angle and we're going to rotate so that one of the legs is lined up with zero. So as I do that, I'm going to get really close, as close as I can. Boom. Close enough. And um, there. Uh, so one of the things you'll notice, and I did this on purpose, is uh, this protractor does not have zero at both ends. It only has zero at one end, which means when we've lined up this angle on the uh, to this, what we thought was a zero, this angle now is pointing somewhere between 130 and 140 degrees. But we know that can't be true because this has to be an acute angle. And so uh, what we're going to do, we don't have to reset anything, we don't have to rotate the protractor. What we're going to do instead is we're going to pretend that this right here is zero. And so when we move over, we've moved over 10 degrees, and each time we move over, that's going to count as 10 degrees. So we could just count, kind of like manually. So 10, 20, 30, 40 degrees, and we can't go to 50. That's that's 50 degrees over here. We can't go there. So there's 40 degrees. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and it looks like it's like uh, another 2 degrees. So let's call it 42 degrees, and let's see how close we are. And look at that. Woohoo! We're right. All right, now the, the point is, you know, remember, these degrees are so tiny. Each degree represents 1 360th of rotation. So imagine taking a cake and cutting it into 360 pieces. Each piece is going to be really thin. And, and that's exactly what a degree is. So if you're off by a degree or two, that's all right as long as you're close, within a degree or two. You don't have to be totally perfect. And that is how you um, measure angles with a protractor.